Until recently, scientists, along with the whole world, believed that interstellar space was silent. But the latest data that Voyager 1 transmitted back to Earth disproved that. What's that sound? Where did it come from in lifeless space? And these are not the only weird signals we got from the Voyager mission. Earlier, Voyager 2 sent back data that transformed our view of interstellar space density. And if it wasn't for a fortuitous turn of events, we could have gotten that data several decades or even several hundred years later. What did the Voyagers find in interstellar space? Which one broke the record for continuous space work? Which one took the first solar system family portrait? And which Voyager is cooler? What's the mission of the Voyagers? The two spacecraft were originally intended to explore the four giants of the solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. NASA calculated that in the late 70s, these four planets would be arranged so that their gravity could be used for acceleration. The mission would have failed if the spacecraft hadn't been launched on time. Such an arrangement of planets happens only once every 176 years. If NASA hadn't managed to prepare everything on time, we would never have seen photos of Uranus and Neptune wouldn't have revealed the rings surrounding Jupiter, and wouldn't have heard any sounds from interstellar space. Both spacecraft are constructed in the same way. Both of them weigh 798 kilograms, and the length of both spacecraft is two and a half meters. Both Voyagers are equipped with 16 jet engines, a 67 megabyte memory device, and equipment powered by plutonium-238. This means that Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were on equal terms at the start, and yet their accomplishment records differ greatly. Which one will be the winner? In August 1977, the first spacecraft was launched from Cape Canaveral, and it was Voyager 2. Voyager 1 was launched 16 days later. Three, two, one. We have ignition, and we have liftoff. From then until today, both spacecraft have regularly sent data back to Earth. Let's see what the Voyagers found in our solar system. Although Voyager 1 took off after its twin brother, a favorable gravity assist allowed it to reach Jupiter four months before Voyager 2 did. It scores one point for speed. In March 1979, Voyager 1 discovered two new moons of Jupiter and took pictures of the first active extraterrestrial volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io. Four months later, Voyager 2 was the first to capture Jupiter's rings and discovered a new moon called Adrastea. Adrastea orbits inside Jupiter's ring system, and it's impossible to observe it from the Earth. Before the images taken by Voyager 2 got to Earth, scientists didn't even know the moon existed. In November 1980, Voyager 1 took the first photos of Saturn and discovered three new moons, Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. After that, Voyager 1 changed its course and left the solar system. Nine months later, Voyager 2 also approached Saturn and took a picture of its surface. Four and a half years passed, and Voyager 2 was busy taking pictures of Uranus. It sent images of Jupiter's moons back to scientists, as well as new data on Jupiter's temperature. It was thanks to Voyager 2 that we discovered that Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system. The temperature on its surface is 59 Kelvin, which is minus 214 degrees Celsius. 
three and a half years later, Voyager 2 approached Neptune and sent pictures of a huge storm in its southern hemisphere back to scientists. Voyager 2 became the first spacecraft to study all four of our solar system's giant planets at close range. It deserves an extra point. Voyager 2 takes the lead again. After its visit to Neptune, it turned off its cameras and headed for interstellar space. Meanwhile, what about Voyager 1? In February 1990, at a distance of 6 billion kilometers from the Sun, it takes its last photos before turning off its cameras. It's a solar system family portrait. The most famous photo of this series is the pale blue dot. While you're looking for the Earth here, Voyager 1 is checking the score. What did the Voyagers find outside the solar system? In 2012, Voyager 1 became the most distant human-made object from the Earth. It passed through the heliosphere, the zone influenced by the solar wind, and entered interstellar space. It also became the fastest human-made object. Voyager 1 moves at a speed of 17 kilometers per second. And it takes the lead in our competition by a score of 3 to 2. But only for a while. In 2012, Voyager 2 became NASA's longest-running mission in history. It broke the previous record of 12,758 days of operation set by the Pioneer 6 probe. The score is even again. And here's where it gets really interesting. In 2018, Voyager 2 entered interstellar space and immediately discovered something strange. We used to think that space was a vacuum, almost devoid of matter. But it's not strictly true. Solar wind density is from 3 to 10 particles per cubic centimeter. And at the boundary of the solar system, this value goes down to two thousandths of an electron per cubic centimeter. But in 2019, at a distance of 18 and a half billion kilometers from the Sun, Voyager 2 reported an increase in the density of matter to 12 hundredths of an electron per cubic centimeter. Scientists still don't know the exact reason for why this is happening. But the more data we get from Voyager, the more we'll be able to study the interstellar wind. And for that, I'm giving Voyager 2 another point. The score is 3 to 4 in its favor. But let's see what strange things were discovered in interstellar space by Voyager 1. These are the vibrations of plasma, the most common substance in space. For example, stars are composed of it. The vibrations occur when solar plasma emissions come across the plasma of interstellar space. So far, there's nothing unusual about this. But in 2017, Voyager 1 picked up a faint but constant signal at a frequency of about 3 kilohertz. This continuous signal lasted for about three years. During this period, Voyager 1 traveled more than a billion six hundred million kilometers, but the signal didn't change. And while scientists are trying to decipher these unusual plasma vibrations, Voyager 1 is comparing the score again. The Voyagers have been collecting data in outer space for 44 years now, but what awaits them in the future? In 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will fly past, at a distance of one and a half light years, the Gleesan 445 star in the Camelopardalis constellation, and will then continue on its voyage through the Milky Way. In 300 years, Voyager 2 will reach the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects that surrounds our solar system. In 40,000 years, Voyager 2 will pass at a distance of 1.7 light years from the Ross 248 star in the Andromeda constellation. 
end. In 296,000 years, Voyager 2 will fly past Sirius in the Canis Major constellation. But we'll most likely never know about any of this. When the spacecraft run out of fuel, they'll continue moving on in their respective journeys, but they won't be able to adjust their antennas to transmit signals back to the Earth. In fact, Voyager 2 will lose contact with us in the year 2034, and Voyager 1 will only be able to receive and send signals until the year 2040. Looks like one more point for Voyager 1. And now, it's time to announce the winner. But first, let's see who was the best in the nominations. The fastest in space is Voyager 1 with its 17 kilometers per second. The most productive in space is Voyager 2, which explored all four giant planets. And a prize of spectator sympathies goes to Voyager 1 for the most touching photo of the Earth. And finally, our winner is Voyager 1, the first spacecraft in interstellar space. Write in the comments which Voyager you supported. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new videos.